Hey, so I recently figured out what the Electoral College is all about. I guess I'm ignorant, uh, but uh, my own high school education uh, seemed to have, seems to have missed that. And uh, so I read about it because my son was uh, studying about it. So the purpose of the Electoral College uh, was in a time when not everyone was highly educated um, uh, to uh, identify respectable or respected uh, individuals to choose presidents for people. I guess the uh, framers of the Constitution felt that your average dumbass in the street wouldn't necessarily make a good choice of president, and maybe that argument still holds today. As um, archaic as that idea may be or not, uh, it's clear enough. So um, I guess the question is why it isn't clear anymore. What complicated it and made it hard to understand? Because it is said to be the hardest piece of the uh, American political process to understand. And uh, what happened is that um, something that the framers of the Constitution never anticipated, political parties came along. So these political parties came along and gobbled up the Electoral College and basically destroyed it. So now it exists as sort of a destroyed remnant um, uh, and uh, it pretty much lives as a, a kind of um, a body snatcher zombie hand puppet of, uh, of the Republican and Democratic parties. So the electors, who were originally conceived to be, uh, I suppose, independent-minded, um, you know, clear-thinking individuals able to make good decisions on behalf of others, uh, these people are now um, uh, rubber stampers for the parties uh, because the parties select them and, um, and, and they pledge themselves uh, to, to vote uh, for the party's candidate. Uh, and uh, the, the parties were never supposed to select these individuals. So when you go to vote on election day, you're not voting for the president, you're actually voting for these people who have pledged to vote for the guy that you thought you were voting for. So why do the parties get to field all these people who fill up the electoral college? Um, I think the only criterion that's given in the Constitution for, the, uh, for who's in the electoral college, well it doesn't say who, but just how many, and it's the uh, total number of representatives in Congress, so total in the House plus two in the Senate. Um, but there is no criterion that I'm aware of uh, that uh, these um, uh, electors uh, need to um, need to have any particular need to reflect a any mix of uh, of existing party affiliation. As far as I know, the electors are supposed to be voted on by the general par general population with uh, no involvement by the parties in that process. I guess you could say, theoretically, uh, they're not really controlling uh, the party affiliations of the electors because they're just fielding candidates, and uh, we, the voters, are under no obligation to vote for those candidates. But the problem is that um, the, uh, our election of these candidates is wrapped up inside the general election, so we, we, we don't know even what we're doing. Uh, and um, but there's something wrong with that, about that. It's, it's not straightforward, and it, it could be straightforward, but it's not in the interest of the political parties for it to be straightforward. Uh, but the Constitution is not with the parties on this. So that brings into focus the, uh, the question of uh, these parties. And um, I don't know if you've, uh, I guess, heard the talk, but um, uh, supposedly the independent the independent party, the independent independent movement, is larger than it has been in decades, and uh, perhaps the Democratic and Republican parties are, for the first time in that long, actually being questioned as such. So maybe we should look at that. Um, we don't need these parties; they're uh, they're power machines. Uh, the history of it is that uh, you know one group of people made a party, and others need to make another party to counteract the first party. So. They're kind of self-justifying, and if they didn't exist at all, then um, uh, you'd have individuals running for president on their merits, uh, rather than um, machines uh, putting forward, um, I don't know whatever the criteria are, but putting forward people uh, in, in order to, 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 to get the uh, members of those machines into political power with no particular qualifications, uh, but just sort of colluding together to force everybody's hand uh, to, to get this, this, this party bandwagon elected. 
So there's a lot to be said against the uh, concept of um, a political party, and uh, the framers of the Constitution certainly didn't think it was required for, uh, uh, for running a good democracy, um, so there's no particular reason to think that we should. Um, it's true the Electoral College uh, is an elitist system, was an elitist system, uh, and the parties represent perhaps a more sort of popular approach to things. On the other hand, it really has dumbed things down. It means that uh, we look at uh, you know, two choices, uh, basically, for president, and um, as you've seen, those can be pretty bad choices. So I think we do need a better system, and I think the place to look is in the structures that the Constitution originally put in place, and play, perhaps the, uh, the thing to, um, to clean out of all this is the structure that was sort of forced into place in a sort of extra constitutional way. Finally, I think it's uh, particularly interesting that it's never said uh, that political parties destroyed the Electoral College. Uh, the Electoral College is not hard to understand. It's been destroyed by the parties.